Uh, my name is Tef Poe, hip hop artist representing St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I've been unsigned hype in the source. I've been uh, featured at the Double XL, and most recently I'm the uh, Freestyle Friday champ of 106 and Park. She said she love him, but he always cheating. And never looking for a job, because he always sleeping. I wrote a letter to the president's administration. No reply, they give a fuck about my generation. I went to the audition in Atlanta, and I, I don't even think initially they were going to pick me. I think uh, the producer, his name was PC, real good dude. And he, uh, I went up and I rapped, and I think I had too much energy. I was too, too off the chain, too uncontained the first time I, I auditioned. And he sent me back to the wall. He called another number up. And then uh, they rapped. He called a few more numbers, and they called my number back up again. And I was just so off the chain, I was just like, basically yelling and <laughs> barking at the producers and stuff, man, it was crazy. So he sent me back to the wall again, and right as he sent everybody out the room, me and him like made eye contact. And he was like, St. Louis, you sit down, I need to see more. So he brought another room of, of rappers in. I rapped against them, and uh, I just, when I went back up, I was like, you know what, I'm here. I might as well go for the gusto. So I, in my mind, I was like, I'm just gonna make this entertaining. So I just pretty much started battling the whole room. Like I ain't even, they weren't even like expecting me to do that. I just was going at people that he didn't even pair me up against. I've seen him perform a, a, quite a few times, but something about that night, I just was soaking up game. And you know, um, he, he he doesn't even need a hype man if need be. He you know, if he chooses that hype man, fine. But in most cases, if not, he doesn't even need a hype man. Uh, I've seen dude rock out with bands and, and completely mess it up, or he can go up there without a band and completely shut it down. Uh, that night, it was just him and the microphone. No shenanigans, no uh, no extra hat tricks. He just was, it was just pure, step by step, back to the basics, MC, MC crowd, DJ, microphone, and he was rocking. And, uh, I think that that's how the forefathers kind of intended for this culture to be, when the, the culture of him seeing to be. So I, I kind of learned, took that lesson from him, like, you know, uh, be ready to, you know, show up and show out at all costs. Get money, fuck bitches. Get kill niggas. Get money, fuck bitches. Get kill niggas. Get money, fuck bitches. Kill niggas. Sell drugs, fuck bitches. I work with Coco of Basement Beats, which is a Grammy award-winning Grammy award production team. Um, they did a few tracks for Nelly, uh, uh, Puffy, uh, and I think he did some stuff with DMX recently. Like, you know, anybody that's, that's huge, Coco is pretty much working with. So, uh, Coco naturally had a connection to Royce the 5'9". And we were looking to do a song with another artist. Actually, we were looking to do a song with, I think, it might have been, uh, it actually might have been Waka, Waka Flocka or something like that. But uh, that fell through. But Coco was like, you know, what would you say if I, could, if I told you I could get Royce on this joint? So, long story short, I come to the studio one day, he plays the track, he has the Royce the 5'9 verse on it. So, it's crazy because Slaughterhouse was in town that night and we were actually reaching out to his manager, Kino. And I think Coco beat us to the draw, man. So, uh, yeah, that's pretty much how that track came about, man. I mean, uh, I think I re-recorded my verse like three times. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to get blew out the water. You know, hopefully I did alright. So, yeah, shout out to Royce the Fly 9. It's a huge look. Let's do it. Yeah. Welcome to the 106 and part beat in section. Your mama smoked crack and got a yeast infection. Uh, no remorse, put you in a wheelchair. The Oklahoma battle rapper on welfare. Bomb on my enemies, this is the distortion. I'm the reason that his grandmama need an abortion. This is how the hood do it, everybody bow down. His little sister got a sex tape with Bow Wow. Look me in my eye, let me say this line right. You're not Jesus Christ, you gon' die twice. Yeah. 
It ain't fair, but Stevie Wonder gave you a whack haircut. <laughs> Special Olympics, here's a suggestion for you corny weak poses. You wanna be dope and get a 40 lit clover. Truthfully, I'm off the rocker like our boundaries from a new PC. We move with speed equivalent to cheaters when it's time to feed it. I'm the Audible Doctor, uh, a member of the Brown Bag All Stars, my group. Um, also, one half of Automatic. Uh, a, a, a few different uh, cats that I'm collabing with and groups that I'm in, but um, those are the, the real foundation. I've been in Brooklyn, New York now for, for nine years, originally from Wisconsin, um, but I moved out here to do my thing, and I think the scene out here is real solid. We got a nice, solid hip-hop scene out here. Somebody told me if this the way of the world, we all... I'm a rapper, a producer, and a DJ, um, and I feel like the fact that I do all three definitely is beneficial. Um, you know, even from, you know, I'll be writing a rhyme to something, and I'll... I'll catch something that I say that I, or, or a certain cadence and I'm like yo that would be dope to cut off on a record or I'll be making a beat and I'll be like you know keep certain things in mind for the MC while I'm making a beat because I understand what goes into to writing and recording over a beat and what, how much room you need to breathe and just all different aspects of, of the different things that go into the different sides I kind of can see as I'm doing each different thing. So I think it's definitely beneficial to be schooled in all three. My group, the Brown Bag All Stars, uh, is four MCs, two DJs, uh, myself, and one of the other MCs, Produce J Two Seven, as well as one of our DJs, DJ Element. Um, so it's, it's really just like a, a, a solid collective of, of artists that do, you know, multiple things. We all met at Fat Beats. We also work at Fat Beats, a record store in, in New York out here. Um, and we all worked there in some capacity and we kind of became friends and really just started hanging out before we even started making music together. We were all, all artists in other groups or we were at a point where we decided to go solo for some reason or whatever. We were, we were all just kind of... Uh, the stars just aligned and we ended up in the same place and we kind of became friends and just hung out and drank. That's where the name Brown Bag All Stars comes from. And, um, and at some point we just started making music and it's just been a progression from there. A lot of people ask me what I use uh, for producing because it doesn't sound like it, but I use all software. Um, primarily a really outdated version of Acid Pro. Um, I actually had to downgrade the operating system of this computer to, to use the program because it's so outdated it wouldn't run on the new operating system. Easiest way to find my music is just head to my website audibledoctor.com A-U-D-I-B-L-E doctor.com uh, Follow me on Twitter Twitter slash audibledoctor Facebook slash audibledoctor uh, or just Google me is the easiest just Google audibledoctor nobody else named that so you'll find my shit <laughs> but uh yeah thanks for rocking with me like the Everest new clothes the whole world in a hoax I think they Andy Kaufman big lock making millions while they fucking up the game proper can't be real with that shit you saying you must be playing the whole world in a hoax folks fucking for payment I think they Andy Kaufman